Someone is sending me weird text messages. The first one came a few days ago. It was a Thursday night, and I was up to my elbows in a cardboard box full of kitchen utensils and baking pans when I heard my phone ping from across the room. I ignored it and went back to rummaging through the box. I had moved into my new apartment a few days earlier and was still living out of boxes. The necessities had been unpacked and set up. My bed, the TV, my kitchen table. Toiletries had been stuffed under the bathroom sink. A dozen black garbage bags full of clothes had been stuffed into my bedroom closet. The rest was hidden in a daunting heap of cardboard boxes I hadn't bothered to label when I packed them. I only rummaged through the pile when absolutely necessary. Like the night before when I realized I hadn't brushed my teeth in three days and spent half an hour trying to find my toothbrush. An hour later, I had abandoned the box of kitchen crap and curled up on the couch to watch TV. I was wearing an oversized orange hoodie that I could pull over my knees like a blanket. It was the wee morning hours and the only shows that were playing were infomercials for blenders and crappy old episodes of CSI. I had just flipped to a televangelist preaching when I heard my phone ping again. It was still next to the stove where I'd left it charging. This time, I got up and dragged myself across the kitchen. I was teetering on the edge of drunkenness from the $5 bottle of bitter Pinot Grigio I'd helped myself to for dinner, pretending it would help me unpack. It just made me feel all warm and floppy and silly and even less motivated than before. I picked up my phone and looked at the texts. The first thing I noticed was that both texts were from the same person. The second thing I noticed was that instead of a contact name or phone number, this person was identified simply with the purple devil horn emoji. Now, here's something you should know about me. I'm not the sort of person that uses emojis. I'm definitely not the sort of person that would save someone as a contact in my phone using an emoji instead of their name. That's when I noticed the third thing about these texts. They were picture messages. I have that setting on my iPhone where message content is kept private on my lock screen. So instead of seeing the text or picture, my phone will just say text message or picture message. Sober me might have seen red flags pop up at this point, but drunk me was excited. It seemed flirtatious and naughty. I quickly tapped in my passcode and clicked straight into my messages to see what pictures this purple grinning devil had sent me. Two blank rectangles. Pictures were of nothing. I tapped on one to make sure I wasn't missing anything. Pinched the screen to zoom in and out again. Nothing. I opened the second one. Same thing. Just blank. Sober me wouldn't have responded. But drunk me wanted to flirt back. I thought for a second about what to say, then typed, I think you forgot to turn the flash on. Despite my drunkenness, I immediately knew that was a stupid thing to say. Who was I talking to? Was I assuming he was sending me a dick pic or something? I hadn't even given my number out to anyone recently, and even if I had, that wouldn't explain why they were showing up as the purple devil horns emoji. I grabbed a water bottle out of the fridge and walked to my bedroom, staring at my phone as I went, waiting. I threw myself onto the bed and kicked off my jeans. Then I opened Safari and typed, Can someone have an emoji instead of a phone number? into the search bar. I must have nodded off before I managed to read the answer because I woke up the next morning with my face pressed against my phone, glued on with a sticky layer of drool. Retracing the events of the night before, I clicked open my messages to see if Purple Devil had ever written back. He, or she, had, but it was just another blank rectangle. No message. Try again. I typed and hit send. I fought back my wine hangover with a handful of aspirin and a bottle of water I had left untouched next to the bed. Then, I went to work. I didn't hear back from the purple devil until that night. I'd almost forgotten about the whole ordeal entirely. I was in the shower, washing my hair, when I heard my phone ping from the pile of crumpled up clothes I'd stripped off and left on the bathroom floor. There was still soap in my hair, but I was so curious to see if it was my purple mystery admirer. 
that I cranked off the water and leapt out of the shower. I was making a huge puddle on the tile floor, but I didn't care. I dug through my heap of clothes, pulling my phone from my pants pocket. Sure enough, it was the purple devil, and he had sent yet another black rectangle. In a sober frame of mind, I started to feel freaked out. Was this some sort of prank? It had to be someone I knew, right? I finished rinsing my hair, then I went to the kitchen. I wanted to make myself a cup of tea, but after searching in vain, I gave up and settled on wine again. I knew it was a bad idea, but I had to calm my nerves. I planned on stopping halfway through the bottle. I didn't realize I had finished the whole thing until I tilted the bottle back to take a sip and only a tiny drop fell onto my tongue. I opened my messages again and pulled up the purple devil. He hadn't sent me any more of his black rectangles, but I wanted to get to the bottom of it. I was also feeling relaxed and drunk, and the idea of a secret admirer had become more appealing and less alarming. Who are you? I typed out. Then I hesitated and hit backspace until it cleared the message. I tried again. Do I know you? That's better, I thought. More flirty, less accusatory. I hit send. I waited and waited. I watched an entire rerun episode of CSI Miami. Still no response. Drunk curiosity turned into drunk frustration. Um, hello? I typed and hit send before I could reconsider. Then, what? Am I not interesting enough for you? No response. Well, fine. I said out loud to nobody, and I stomped to bed. I'd almost drifted off to sleep when I heard my phone ping from under my pillow. It was from the purple devil. No message. Just another blank rectangle. So you're just not going to say anything? Who are you? I typed. I waited for a response until I drifted off to sleep. I woke up the next morning and immediately reached for my phone. One new text from Purple Devil. One more black rectangle, bringing the total to six. At this point, I wasn't sure what I felt. I was 20% curious, 20% annoyed, 20% freaked out, and 40% hungover. It was Saturday, so I didn't have to work, but my pounding headache wouldn't let me sleep in. I dragged myself out of bed and went to the pile of boxes that needed unpacking. By noon, I had managed to reduce the pile to a few lingering boxes. I thought about hitting the mess of clothes bags in the closet. I dumped them there on move-in day, closed the closet doors, and hadn't looked at them since, but I decided I'd done enough for one day. I rewarded myself by driving to the grocery store and picking up another bottle of wine and some spam to fry up for dinner. I watched CSI and ate my spam, and then I sprawled out on the couch. I hadn't opened the wine yet, and I thought maybe I didn't need to. Maybe I could take the night off. I watched a few more episodes and still hadn't opened the wine. I was tempted though, so I decided to go lay down in bed. The further I was from the wine, the stronger my resistance. The digital clock on my nightstand said it was 11.30pm. I hadn't gone to bed that early in months. I let my head hit the pillow and closed my eyes, willing myself to fall asleep. I couldn't remember the last time I had tried to go to sleep sober. I might have drifted off, but then I heard my phone ping. I didn't want to look, but I was too anxious not to look. I braced myself, expecting to see the purple devil. My heart strained in my chest, I could feel my blood pulse through my temples. But it wasn't him. Verizon message. You've used about 75% of your 2 gigabyte data plan. Of course I have. I sighed and rolled my eyes at myself. I'd gotten cable and internet installed the day I moved in, but I'd never switched my phone over to Wi-Fi. I opened up my settings and searched for my router name. It prompted me for the password. I couldn't remember the password, but I had taken a picture of it on the back of my modem. I scrolled through my camera roll and found the picture. It was too dark. I couldn't make it out, the letters and numbers. I pinched the picture to zoom in, trying to make out the password. But the picture was too dark. Out of habit, I went to the photo settings and started to lighten the photo with the exposure and brightness tools. Then the realization struck me like a wave of cold water. I was lightening the picture to reveal something I couldn't see. What if I did the same thing with the purple devil's pictures? I felt a chill go down my spine, even though I had no reason to feel afraid yet. 
I clicked into my messages and pulled up my conversation with the purple devil. Six black rectangles were waiting for me, and my fingers shook as I saved the first one he had sent. I opened my camera roll and opened the first picture, then went to settings. I held my finger on the exposure slider and slowly moved it, the picture brightening as I did. It was like watching a photo develop. The image slowly appeared, forming before my eyes as the brightness melted the black away and revealed shapes. My bed, I realized. It was a picture of my bed, the same bed I was laying in. I couldn't control my shaking anymore. My body had gone numb, my limbs cold. I frantically went back to the conversation and saved the rest of the pictures, then clicked to my camera roll. I brightened the second picture. It took me a second to realize what I was looking at. It was me, sitting on my couch, drinking wine from the bottle. I felt nauseous as I recognized the orange hoodie I was wearing, and realized that the photo had been taken the first night. He had taken it from behind the stack of boxes while I was watching TV, right before he sent it. He had been in my home. He had been watching me while I was sitting right there in front of him. I knew I should call for help. The police, my landlord, anyone. I should get out of the apartment. But I couldn't. I needed to see the rest first. I opened the third picture and started brightening it. Any blood that was left in my face drained when I saw the shape of my face form out of the darkness. It was me, in bed, passed out in my orange hoodie, the bottle of water next to me. Oh god. There were black lines across the photo, and when my eyes glanced up to trace the angle it had been taken from, I realized it was the closet. The lines in the photo were the slits in the closet. He'd been watching me from the inside. I grabbed my blankets and ducked under them, even though I knew that wouldn't help anything. I should run. I should leave. But I was glued to the spot. I opened the next picture, but before I could brighten it, my phone pinged. No. No, no, no. It was the purple devil. It was another blank rectangle. I opened it. My fingers shakily hit save. My phone nearly fell out of my hands. My palms were so sweaty. I swallowed, tried to drag the slider to adjust the brightness. My finger slipped and instead of gradually brightening, it went all the way to the end of the slider and instantly illuminated the frame. My eyes adjusted, focusing in. It was my bed, taken from the same angle as before. I could see a lump hiding under the covers, and I knew it was me. This photo was different than the other one, though. There weren't any lines. He wasn't in the closet anymore. I didn't wait anymore. I didn't think. I just threw my body forward. My feet hit the floor in front of the bed, and I whipped the blanket away from me, throwing it towards where I knew he must be standing, waiting. I ran, because I was sober, because I had never been more terrified of anything in my life, because the fear gave me a strength and speed I, I didn't know I had. I felt him behind me, closing in as I reached the front door of my apartment. Everything happened in slow motion. My hand fumbled with the lock. My other hand grasped the door handle. I heard footsteps behind me. I felt fingers wrap through my hair and graze my skull just as I pulled the door open. I never looked back. I ran, screaming, down the hallway, down the stairs, all the way to where my car was parked. I locked myself in and hit the gas, the tire screeching angrily over the pavement. I didn't dare look in the rearview mirror, even after I made it to the highway. I didn't catch my breath until I was pulling into my sister's driveway. It was the only place I could think to go. All the lights were off, but I ran up to the front porch and rang the doorbell three times. I could tell I'd woken her up. She came to the door in her cat pajamas, rubbing sleep from her squinty eyes. She was mad at first, but I think she was surprised, relieved to see me sober. She told me I could sleep in the guest bed, and we'd talk about it in the morning. I fell onto the guest bed, still trying to make sense of what had happened. Then it happened again. It was from him. A black rectangle.